two months ago, I spent $4,000 on this 2022 BMC Road Machine 5. 500 miles later, do I still love it? Or did I waste my money? But before, I wanna talk a little bit about hedonic adaptation. And we're gonna do that while I eat this spicy chicken sandwich from Dave's Hot Chicken. I'm putting gloves on because it has like the top four of the spiciest peppers just blended together. The spice is made with Carolina Reapers. This might be a bad idea. Hedonic adaptation is the tendency we have human. Uh, whoa. <laughs> All right, it's okay though, uh, because hedonic adaptation is the tendency we have just always return to the middle, our baseline set point. So no matter how good an experience is or how painful an experience is, eventually we return back to the middle. Ah. Uh, Hopefully that happens pretty soon. All right, let's talk specs. This is the 2022 BMC Road Machine 5. I made a video on my last bike, the Giant Revolt 2. You can go check that out to get a sense of where I'm coming from. But this bike, all carbon frame, carbon fork. It's got a mechanical Altegra group set, which shifts like a dream, especially compared to the Soro group set I was using before. But my favorite part, proper hydraulic disc brakes, not the Giant Conduct system that's in the Revolt 2. The cool thing about this is when I'm in the drops, I feel way more comfortable just using one finger for brakes, which here in California, where I'm constantly going up hills and descending, comes in handy a lot. This bike is better than my old bike in almost every single way except one, the wheels. These are alloy wheels from Mavic. My old bike also had alloy wheels, but they were tubeless ready. These are not, they're clincher. Just like the pain of the spicy chicken sandwich will eventually subside, my excitement over this brand new shiny bike will also fade over time. Uh, it's not always uh, great to live in the extremes. I mean, this is delicious, but it's pretty painful. Um, what, was I, what am I supposed to say? What's the script? Basically, being below your set point is not a great place to be. But boy, oh boy, is it fun to be on this side of things. This bike, feels way more zippy, more fun to ride, and more comfortable than my last bike. One of the reasons why I picked the road machine over the team machine, that's BMC's race-oriented bike. I wanted to be more comfortable on long rides, especially on bumpy roads like this. Also, I don't race, so that kind of seemed like overkill. It's interesting, one of the very first sensations I had when I jumped on this bike for the first time was how compliant it was. So it's been a couple days, huge difference. I can't believe how much more comfortable a carbon frame is than an aluminum frame. Honestly, this thing's super comfortable. However, these tires are way less comfortable than the tubeless tires I was running on my Giant. And the result is this dichotomy. The bike overall feels more comfortable, but I feel the road a lot more because of the tires. The weird thing is at the end of the ride, I'm not as sore on this bike as I was on the Giant. One of the biggest improvements this bike has over my last bike is the handling. This thing feels amazing while cornering. Now, I know there's probably some more experienced riders, some crit racers that may be laughing at me right now. From what I've read, this isn't as responsive as a proper race bike, but it's all relative, right? When I lived in New York, I rode a Fixie. That was a twitchy bike. Every single ride was an adrenaline rush. And frankly, I'm a little surprised I made it out alive. That's not what I'm looking for in a bike anymore. If my Giant Revolt 2 is a pickup truck, this thing is a Tesla. When you're turning a corner, you pick a line and it just follows it, almost like it's on autopilot. This bike is the perfect blend between being racy and feeling stable and safe. I know that sounds like two things that shouldn't mix, but man, it feels good on this thing. There are a few things that make me feel bad, and unfortunately, they're all my fault. The handlebars here are scratched. Oh fuck, that doesn't sound good. That's from the clamp that I use to attach the camera to make these videos. Kind of ironic. This is my first carbon bike, like the whole frame is carbon, and I've learned carbon bikes come with their own special form of anxiety, and unfortunately, it's not unfounded. The first offense is this little nick on the chainstay thanks to the chain popping off, probably because I was cross-chaining 
or something like that. It also did this. This is probably what I'm most embarrassed about. Initially, I was really excited to have a bike with an Altegra group set. Big upgrade from the Sora group set I had before. But some of that excitement has been replaced with fear of what other cyclists will think when they see that it's scratched up. Do they think I don't take care of my bike? Is it just because, do I deserve it? But the thing I have to remember and the thing people much wiser than me have told me, dude, just be grateful you have a freaking awesome bike. It still rides beautifully and it will for a long time. And honestly, what's the best part about riding anyways? The gear is a lot of fun. I'm a nerd, I love nerding out, but honestly, the best part about riding a bike is being outside and riding a bike. So, almost done with the sandwich. I don't think I'm back at my set point with the span Spanish, the sandwich yet. Gotta finish it without, get a brave, oh, let's finish this video. With the sandwich, I'm not back at my set point. I'm still kind of like down here in Pain Town. With the bike, I'm pretty close to being at the set point again. And uh, you can do a lot of things when you're, you're at that point. You can practice gratitude. Uh, you can really appreciate what you have. Or you can start all over again. 